Van Ness marooned on an island. So if you need a chemical peel but don't have access to one, you can just grind up some fire ants, honey. Ow, bitch! The most famous I've ever been to this day was while I was in college writing a column for the school paper. I was the Carrie Bradshaw of campus. If she was still a virgin and somehow less funny. I wrote every week, but there were two columns that made the students demand I get fired from the paper. So I couldn't help but wonder, can you really get fired from a job you aren't being paid for? Let's set the scene. Place is Christopher Newport University in Newport News, which is a real place and not a menthol news rolling paper. The year is 2012, the first semester of my sophomore year. Unbeknownst to me, I'm one year away from dropping out and several years away from swiping that V-card. I asked the school newspaper if I could write a comedy column for them. They already had a sex advice column, so I figured why not have my own column, sans sex or good advice. Also, I figured, well, they'll definitely publish the word penis. Maybe they'll publish my penis jokes. And they did. But I didn't even have to say the word penis for my second column ever to catch a lot of eyes on the campus. It wasn't even like some edgelord shit. I saved the column so I could remember what the hell I wrote that got everybody so mad. This was my second column of the semester and the whole basic topic of the column was me relearning about college as a wise, learned, part-time at McDonald's sophomore. Towards the end, in the only paragraph that anybody gave a fuck about, I wrote, Every year I get to relearn about the incessant nuisance that is Greek students. I don't mean students from Greece, but I have my eye on them too. <laughs> You're the fucking genius, bro! Continues, I don't mind hanging out with frat bros and sorority sisters. They're all fine people. But come rush time, they become like a douchey, sperry-wearing cancer that infests the campus, and there seems to be no sign of remission until rush is over. Now, if you don't know what any of that means, Congrats on not paying for any of your friends. Rush is the few weeks out of the year that fraternities and sororities try to recruit young, new blood into their antiquated social clubs. It's famous for involving hazing and membership fees you could pay off your student loans with, but instead they usually go straight to beer and date rape drugs. I didn't say any of that shit in the article, and I could have. I thought I was being very respectful. Until I flip to the opinion section of the paper next week, and I see this. CNU Greek organizations respond to comedy column written by Interfraternity Council and Panhellenic Council. That means the head of all sororities and the head of all fraternities respond to me. Little old me. Big old me. I ain't gonna read this whole thing. They mostly just suck their own dick about how great Greek life is. The only thing that bugged me is that my jokes were actually funnier when the head of all frat bros wrote it. We would like to respond to comments made by in the September 19th issue of the captain's log of the comedy column written by Stefan Bolus. Bolus referred to Greek students as an incessant nuisance and quote, like a douchey, sperry wearing cancer that infests the campus. <laughs> I did, I did. The head of all sorority sisters wrote, and I quote, as the governing body representing all sorority women on Christopher Newport University campus, Panhellenic Council would like to join the Interfraternity Council in response to the comments made in the comedy column in the Captain's Log September 19th issue, our September 11th. Blah, 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 blah. As a council, we cannot help but find this perception of our Greek community troubling and hope that the nature of these statements were in fact Satirical. <sighs> Man, they sound fun. Believe it or not, I had a bunch of friends in fraternity. As a freshman, I joined another social club on campus that caused a fraction of the membership fees and was still twice as gay as a frat. I was in an a cappella group. See how I leave with every piece of you. These were the upperclassmen I could depend on for getting beer and drugs before I had a car or the balls to buy it myself. We were tighter than soprano ass and I ain't talking veto. I remember my acapella rehearsal after this column came out because all of my bros were saying that their weekly seances or fucking Greek meetings, whatever they call them, had just turned into. Bro, who's this Steven fat? Sounds like someone didn't get a bed. <laughs>
I was fucking loving the attention, so I didn't care what anyone thought until it turned out there was one person who I did care very much what they thought about the column, and I didn't even know it till I met this dude. I met him the week after I wrote that incendiary Greek column. Part of my response was, but seriously, is there any real need to run damage control in the article posted in the captain's log? It's the captain's log for Christ's sake. It could say shit fart boner penis on the front page and no one would notice. And my column is all the way in the back. I wouldn't be surprised if my editor had just randomly thrown in the words huge cock into the middle of an article just to see if anyone would notice. I doubt they would. Huge cock. That week was also the week my editor had invited me to a staff meeting for the school paper and said I should go, so I did. The meeting was about 10 students in charge of writing the paper and the head of the journalism department. Now this dude, I literally can't remember his name, but I'm just gonna call him Dr. Elliot. He reminds me of Dr. Melfi's therapist. Cause this dude seemed like the type of cool dude you could drink with, but also just demanded respect cause he knew his shit so well. Therapist, therapist, the journalists, journalist professor. Dude was intimidated, not cause he was a dick, but he was going around the whole room criticizing everyone's writing. And now all of a sudden I'm terrified what he's gonna say about my vile column. And I swear to God, this is exactly what he did when he got to my column. He goes, back of the paper, comedy column, welcome to the team. Uh, huge cock thing, that was funny. I really liked that, that was good. He said nothing else and I felt fucking invincible until the next semester. This is my first column back from winter break. Basically about me and my friend's trip to New York City for New Year's Eve. And the climax of the column, pun intended, was about the night of the 30th. We all drank like it was the 31st and the two couples I was fifth wheeling with basically ended up fucking in front of me in the hotel room. I've never been a threat sexually, why wouldn't they? So I did what any virgin in my situation would do. I hop in the shower to jerk off. Going, I'm going, it's taking forever. And then my buddy bursts through the door, starts puking in the toilet next to me, his girl's with him. I'm two feet away in the shower doing my thing, but they can't see me. So the messed up thing was I could have stopped, but I did it. The experience obviously didn't turn me on. I just didn't want to stop and then get whiskey dick and have all of my efforts have been in vain. So me and my boy ended up ejecting bodily fluids at the same time. That's at best, maybe funny, definitely gross. The important thing to know is that that word for word made it into the school paper. <laughs> I gotta give a disclaimer that this column specifically was so fucking unfunny. It was not clever at all. I just thought being vulgar was also being funny. A very common mistake for a first year comedian. But also to be fair to me, coming and puking are like the third and fourth funniest things your body does behind burping and farting. They're like the body's four original punchlines. And now I'm coming while my friend is puking and he doesn't even know it. The comedy guys gave me a gift. Unfortunately, the comedy guys gave it to probably the most unready comedian on earth. And the entire student body let me know. Like I said, initially I didn't give a shit what anyone thought, but I do care about my journalism daddy, Dr. Elliot. So I went to the meeting that week. And again, I'll never forget, he gets to the back and he goes, yeah, you know, I read your column every week and it's usually pretty good, but uh, this wasn't, this was bad. And I said, oh yeah, I mean, totally. It'll, it's not gonna happen again, I'm sorry. Then at that meeting, they changed the editing process for the school paper, so more eyes had to be on it before it was published, which is a long way of saying I fucked up so hard, I changed how the school paper was published. Cause they were getting the same heat that I was. The week it was published, it was just a barrage of emails and Facebook messages daily. Cause no one would say to my face that they wanted me and my editor's heads on sticks and propped in front of the school paper's office as a warning to other writers. Like don't write about something kind of funny in a comedy column. They were saying I should be ashamed of myself. I misrepresented my school. I misrepresented the entire Christopher Newport University. I dirtied the school's name like I was the fucking mascot of this school. Whose mascot, by the way, is Christopher Newport, the dude that Captain Hook is based off of. My fellow captains don't even want to talk about semen. You see how fucking clever I am now? So the first article, I got the Greeks to respond to me in the opinion section. The week after this article came out, the entire opinion section was about me. And I know because I kept the article. Because one day in college, I dropped acid by myself and went to town. A written apology from the writer of the comedy column. Half-ass fucking apology for me. Wow, this is fucking pretentious as shit for my apology. Apologizing for a bad column would be apologizing for me being a writer. 
<laughs> what a fucking fat prick. In defense of the comedy call written by my boy Kyle, fuck yeah, thank you for the solidarity. In response to a concerned parent that wrote it, comedy or crude. This whole thing right here is one article against me. It says addressing the comedy column in the captain's log poorly. Written by. <laughs> I scratched out and wrote cunt and cunt junior. Oh man, I'm fucking hilarious on acid. So this whole thing is about me and it's written by two frat bros who have, I have affectionately named Cunt and Cunt Jr. And I'm amazed they wrote it this long. They would have had to take a lot of time off of their busy schedule of raping unconscious chicks to get out this many words. Even my fucking column wasn't this long. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I obviously critiqued them super hard while I was on acid. Look, I got one, two, three or four different colors of ink, dude. I went hard as fuck on these dudes. In addition to that long ass article, Cut and Cut Jr. also made a petition online to get me fired from a job I wasn't getting paid for. The petition can be found at this URL address. Okay, bro. The moment it was brought to my attention, I was like, fuck yes, I wanna see how many people signed this thing, but it wouldn't tell me. So I thought, Maybe if I sign it, it'll tell me how many signatures it's gotten thus far. So I signed it under the name Ivana Humpelot. <laughs> but it wouldn't tell me. So then I got mad that I signed it and I signed it again under the name Patrick Dick's a swinging Murphy. Mostly just so if someone came up to me and they're like, dude, it got 500 signatures. I could be like, really, 498. Urban legend says it actually got closer to 2,000 signatures from a 5,000 student campus. So you know, 1,998 signatures. My other favorite part of all of this was this really was school-wide. I had multiple friends come up to me telling me that they had discussed my column in their class, in person with everybody. And then it happened to me. I was in a print journalism class with about 200 kids. My teacher goes, so there's been a bit of drama in the captain's log recently. Me and my friends just looked at each other. I got this big shit-eating grin immediately immediately because I know she doesn't know I'm there, you know? I have people say she tried to set me up. That's not fucking true. She had 200 kids in that class. Someone could have overdosed in a bag and she wouldn't have fucking noticed till they failed at the end of the year. So she continued, she goes, does anyone know anything about it? I said, I might. She said, why is it? Because I wrote it. The thing that everybody's really upset about, I wrote that. And she goes, oh my gosh, well this is, this is perfect. I had no idea. Can you kind of explain what happened on your side? And of course I had been practicing this shit for a week. I get up, I give this big speech. I totally own up to the fact that it was not funny at all. I just thought being vulgar was being funny. Very common mistake for a new comedian. I was very articulate. Until somebody said, well, what was the article about? I got so much heat for being disgusting that I really didn't know how disgusting I was allowed to be anymore. And plus I like this teacher, so I, I'm put in a weird position and I just summed it up by going, well, it was about me and my friend's trip to New York City for New Year's Eve. And basically the whole trip ended with me jerking off in the shower. It's a good trip, good trip. And when my teacher offered anyone in the class to rebuttal with a civilized discussion about print journalism in a class of 200 kids, which is more than enough to be a sample size of the population, two vocab words I still remember from that class. Nobody said shit. They can be anonymous, dude. Everybody was saying I was so horrible, but I gotta be honest, my column got the newspaper in circulation. Students started reading that shit every week because of the fucking mark I left on it. It being the paper fails to provide a high quality of reporting and editing. It prints shock value, controversial articles, and columns week after week in an attempt to gain readership. And then two paragraphs later, the only reason we, the authors of this opinion piece, personally pick it up is to see how bad it is this week. You want the puke and cum stories? Steven got the puke and cum stories, bitch. The only reason the school paper survived prior to me was because I had a buddy that lived off campus that would steal dozens of issues every time it came out, so as fair it had something to shit on. My editors confirmed that the week after that whole fucking notorious column came out, they didn't have to replace any school newspapers. They had all been taken, all scooped up, because the kids had to see what the fuck was going on. I ended up dropping out after that semester, but not because of any fucking backlash where I was afraid to show my face or anything. I basically, I didn't have my fourth year paid for, so I was gonna take two semesters off to work full time anyway, but then I discovered stand up. So I lied to my parents and told them I was gonna work until I go back, and then I ended up moving to New York City my senior year. But in a weird way, you could say I didn't mind not returning because of all this fucking backlash, 
over a puke and cum store. I really respected the CNU community until I saw what set them the fuck off. Back then I was so young, I thought the PC police only canceled people who were racist or homophobic. I didn't think I could be canceled because I thought it was at least a little funny and I was coming while my friend was <laughs> Which is something fraternity brothers and sorority sisters do on a weekly basis, need I remind you. They do it behind closed doors and it's no problem. I write about it in one little publication that encompasses the whole campus and suddenly it's a problem. I do want to say I had a lot of support during this time too from my friends and sometimes people I didn't even know and if you are fucking this far into this video there's a good chance you're one of them so thank you for telling me fuck the haters because I needed to hear that. The cherry on top of it, I was never fired. Dr. Elliot didn't give a fuck about that petition probably because he saw it was signed by Patrick Dix of Swing and Murphy. He did put me on a shorter leash. I wrote cleaner, made me write more clever until at the end of the semester I moved into an apartment instead of backing with my parents and started doing comedy every week. Now the same frat bros and sorority sisters that wanted to fire me over a puke and cum story are at home with their toddlers who are just products of their cum also now puking in their faces. I met. It was a fun experience. I just hope they're all simultaneously broke and too rich to get a stimulus check. Leave a comment if you think I should be fired from YouTube. I'll sign it twice. I'll sign fucking anything. Stay the fuck home and don't jerk off in the shower if the glass is transparent. Rookie mistake. You gotta get that nice glass that makes your whole body look like a blur, you know? My boy couldn't even see my arm as I was beating my fucking meat.